Now, in your notes, I have a little title called Calvinism is Destroyed by a Parable. And I want to show that to you in just a moment. But there are people who have a, a weird idea about what grace really is. And I want to explain that to you. So in your notes there, the following simple acrostic tulip is a classic reformed five-point Calvinist viewpoint. So they uh, call it the tulip. Uh, it's the flower that uh, God hates. The T stands for total depravity of man. They teach that man is so depraved, he cannot think, reason, choose, make choices of any kind. He's dead. And because he's dead, he can't do anything. I know that's, uh, that's a problem. So they believe that man is so dead and so out of it that he can't make a decision. So God reaches down and chooses to save who he wants. So if you represented the world and I was God and I looked out upon you, you're all dead. You're all separated from me and you can't do anything about it. You have no desire. You don't have no interest. You cannot seek God. You cannot find God. You don't know God. You don't want to know God. And you're, you're gone. You, you're really gone astray. So it's grace if I pick this person and that person and that person and that person. And you ought not be upset about it because you're all going to go to hell anyway. But if I save some of you, you ought to be thankful that I saved some of them. Of course, I didn't save you. I mean, you still get to go to hell. We don't believe that here. The U stands for unconditional election. That God chooses whoever he wants. And it's not your choice. It's God's choice. He chose who he wants to save, and it's uh, unconditional. It means that you don't have a choice in the matter. So you don't get to choose. And so, therefore, those who go to heaven, God chose, and those who go to hell, God chose. And nobody really chose anything. We're really just puppets in this whole world. We don't believe that here. The L stands for limited atonement. Limited atonement means that uh, Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, didn't have to pay for everybody's sin. He just paid for those few that he chose. And so the rest of you didn't have your sins paid for. We don't believe that here. You see, we believe the Bible. This is not Bible. They'll make it sound like Bible, but it's not Bible. And the, um, the I stands for irresistible grace. In other words, when God gives you the faith to believe, you just can't resist it. You just can't resist it. In spite of all the things the Bible says that they resisted God and they resisted the Holy Spirit, they say you can't resist it. But they say that. But we don't believe that here. We believe that you can resist salvation. You can say no to God. They don't believe that. The P stands for perseverance of the saints. It means that if God saves five of you, you five will mature in the Lord and you five will persevere to the end and you will Remain faithful. They call it guaranteed. And if you don't, then that's a sign you weren't really saved to start with. And that's a whole can of worms. We don't believe that here. But I do believe that God answers every one of these charges. Very simple. And one parable. One little parable that he gave. And I want to show that to you today. But first of all, before we get there, I wanted to read something to you. I just got this on just a couple of days ago. I get them all the time. He says, I got myself tangled up in Calvinism. I got so confused and depressed. I doubted my own salvation. I even told the Lord, your yoke is too heavy and it's unbearable. Everything in my life was negative. I thought, how can I spread the gospel when I don't even know if I'm saved? My wife has been dragged down with me. But the Lord took me to your video on Calvinism. And just like that, the weight lifted off me. The Lord took me back to when I first believed. One saved, always saved. Now I look forward to spreading the gospel. Thank you and praise be to the Holy Spirit for directing me to you. You're now in my prayers and may the Lord heap rewards on you for your steadfastness. And his name is John. I live in a small settlement in New Zealand. That's not in America. <laughs> way, way over there on the other side of the world. All because of our YouTube ministry. And remember, these are just a few of the ones that we will hear from. Just think of how many people are being reached and never say a word. 
Look how many radio messages you've li listened to, and you never call the radio station or call the people or send a note or said thank you. But you listen all the time just when you're riding up down the road and you'll hear somebody and you never say a word. Well, that's the same way it is with us. But we believe that we're planting seeds that will grow. Now, I want you to notice in the book of Romans in chapter 1, I want to just use this to uh, explain that God says that people are without excuse. Knowing that there is a God and knowing that there is judgment against being unrighteous. And that there is a day coming when uh, you're going to have to give account. See, God puts those things inside of a person when they're born. And look there in verse 19, Romans chapter 1. He says, because that which may be known of God is manifest, and see that word, in them. Things that can be known of God, that God says, you can know this. Now, you may not know everything, but there are some things you can know. And those things that you know are evidences that there is a God. He says, for God has showed it unto them. <clears throat> God has revealed things to mankind. So that mankind is without excuse. They know there's a God. They may not know God, but they know there is a God. And then he makes this statement. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. In other words, the invisible things that you cannot see can be seen by the things that are made. Now, we've never seen God, but we've seen that the world is here and we didn't do it. Somebody made it. And he says, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. So that they are, and you ought to underline this, without excuse. What about all those innocent people? There are no such things. There are no innocent people. Now, I want you to take your Bible and turn to the book of Matthew in chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Jesus Christ taught in many ways. Sometimes he referred to the sun, sometimes the moon. Sometimes the lilies of the field and the birds of the year. And sometimes he would take a, a story that everybody knew. And he said, let me tell you the story about the man that went forth to sow. It's a simple little story. But you ought to see the depth of this story. Because that's really what it's about. In chapter 13, he makes a statement here in verse 3. And he spake many things unto them in parables. Now, a parable is a way to teach spiritual truths to a mixed audience where you have people who want to know truth and you have people that don't want to know. Those who want to know can understand. Those who don't want to know will not understand. And those who do really want to understand that didn't understand can ask the question. And these disciples came to him and they asked him, says, what do you mean? But at least they responded. Now, get this. He says, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. Fowls came, devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. When the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Some fell among thorns. And the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold and some sixty, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now, in the book of Revelation, when it says, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. But none of that is said here. So the question comes is, what, what, what is all this talking about? What, explain what you mean by all of this. So I just want you to look in your notes there and we're not going to turn to these verses, but I just want to read them to you. Because God says that the soil that he talks about here is determined by your response to previous light. In other words, the soil, whether it's by the wayside or whether it's stony ground or thorny ground or good ground, depends upon the mind of the man. Because you see, he's not really talking about just a sower sowing the seed and some crop growing up. He's talking about the people that he's talking to. Their minds. Some of it's 
on the wayside. Some people's minds is stony. Some is thorny. And some is good ground. And that's why some could receive and some, some did not receive. But the seed was sown to all the minds. Now get this. John 1, 9 says, That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. There's a certain amount of light that everybody will have. Then he says in verse 10, He was in the world, and you ought to underline it, the world was made by him. Why did they have to say that? Because that's the evidence that there's a God. The world that we see every day of our lives is the evidence there is a God. Now, some people will accept that evidence, and some people will not accept it. And it doesn't matter how many tracks God has laid around. Well, all the animals and all the people, all the plants, all the stars, the earth itself. And when you look in the mirror, that's the evidence there's a God. You prove there is no God. I don't have to prove there is one. You prove there is not one. Now get this, the next statement. Luke 12, 48 says, But he that knew not did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes, but unto whomsoever much is given. Now this is the only point that I want to dwell on today. Unto whomsoever much is given, the greater the light. Of him shall be much required, the greater the responsibility. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. The more you responsibility you give somebody, the more you expect from somebody. So the Bible is clear. You and I have been given light. But the condition of our mind is what will make the difference, whether we accept it or we reject it. Now, as we go through all four of these types of soil this morning, one of these is yours. One of these represent you. You are one of these. So we're going to help you to discover yourself. It's kind of like the guy that, uh, well, this man, he had a son that was kind of lost. He just didn't know who he was. And he was a long-haired hippie, and he just couldn't find himself. Got a haircut, and there he was. He was the next-door neighbor's kid. He'd been raising him for 10 years, didn't he? Now, when you go through this, you'll see some things that are made very clear. But now, look there now in your notes. Look in verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because. Now here's the reason. Here's a reason. Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. You say, that doesn't sound fair. Look like God chose some and God rejected others. God chose some people to see it and other people not to see it. Well, let's not quit too soon. Look in verse 12. For whosoever hath understanding, to him shall be given more understanding, more truth, more light. And he shall have more abundance, more light or less light. That's what we're talking about. Understanding things, seeing things. Hearing and believing. You see, those are choices that we make. We determine by what we hear whether to believe it or not to believe it. Like right now. There's a story about a guy up there in Alabama, and things have been said about him, and people have got to decide whether or not to believe it or not believe it. It's happening everywhere, all over the place. I bet all these new revelations that are coming out are scaring some people half to death. Well, nobody will ever know. Oh, no, it'll be on Fox News tonight. <laughs> whosoever. And then he says, but whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away even that which he hath. See, God has given certain amount of light to everybody. The light of every man that comes into the world. And God knows that we know there is a God. And this truth, if you do not believe the evidence and the truth then God says their foolish heart is darkened. 
you lose the light you had and your mind becomes darkened. And then the Bible says they become as fools. Claiming to be wise, but they become fools. Because they refuse to believe the truth. So if you're going to believe a lie, a man is a fool. And the Bible says in the book of Psalms, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Now, it wasn't because that's how he was originally born. No, that's because of education. And we have people today that are teaching in our schools, there is no God. You don't need the Bible. We don't need Christianity. We don't need truth. So lo and behold, look at our country. Look at how the morals have gone down the drain. You'd be surprised how teenagers are living today and how adults are living today because they don't believe the truth. Now get this. He makes a statement in verse 13. Therefore speak I to them in parables. And get this. Because they seen, see not. And hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. You see, it's the people that are doing this to themselves. Not God, but they're the ones that are doing it. When you reject truth, when you reject light, you harden yourself. You harden your own mind. And therefore, it becomes more difficult for you to ever understand and to believe, to see. And then you have, yes, some people that see it and understand it, and there's truth, and their minds are good soil, and they can just believe it. Now look what he says in verse 14. He quotes an Old Testament verse, and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, by hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. You'll hear it, but you don't understand it. You don't get it. You see, the soil is talking about the minds of individuals. Where is your mind? And some people do not have a mind to receive truth. You can't know truth. No, there's no right and wrong. And there's people by the wayside that say, I don't know and I don't care. You ever talk to people like that? They don't know and they don't care and they don't want you to talk to them. I come across people like that all the time. Already made up their mind. There is no God, there's no heaven, there's no hell, and when I die, that's all there is to it. Who told them that? It wasn't God that told them that, and that's not the truth. They believe a lie. So then he makes this statement in verse 14. He says, See and ye shall see and shall not perceive. You will not understand the truth. Look in verse 15. For this people's heart is waxed gross. Not that they couldn't, but they chose not to. This has nothing to do with God choosing certain people to believe and other people he won't let them believe it. No, this is people who are doing it to themselves. I may stand up here and I can tell you the truth about how to go to heaven. And that it's a gift. And that it's totally free. You may think in your mind, that's too easy. Can't be that way. The gift of God, you've got to work for it. That makes sense? And you can refuse to accept the payment Christ made on the cross for you. And somebody else can sit here and say, you know, that makes perfectly good sense. Because some people will want to know the truth and some people will not want to know. <clears throat> and it doesn't matter how hard you explain it. Some will believe and some people will not believe. Guess what he says. They have, and this is so important, this part of the verse. For this people's heart is waxed gross. That means calloused. And their ears are dull of hearing. And their eyes, underline these three words, they have closed. Who did this? They did it. People want to blame God. No, don't blame God. They did it to themselves. God so loved the world, but there's people that don't believe God so loved them. They don't believe that there is a God. You'd be surprised at the things that you'll find out from people when you talk to them. And he says here, they have clothed, and here's the reason. Less at any time, any time, it means they can. Any time they could if they choose to open their eyes and see and to believe. So it's not God that doesn't want them to see. It's that they have rebelled against the truth and the light that God's already given them. So when God wants to give them more light, they reject that. 
And it's the gospel that is the light that helps them to see and understand these things that they've known about God but didn't understand. And so when they see that, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe it, would not perish but have everlasting life. So God, see, is revealing the truth to those who have already revealed light and they accept that light and they accept that light and they accept that light and when they see and they hear the gospel, they can believe the gospel. But when you harden yourself by doubting and questioning and not wanting to know or that there is no God. <coughs> now, some people's mind become like a rock, hard-headed. But if it ever came across when they can know the truth, they'd want to know. But there's some people that don't want to know. I had a man come in the other day. He said, I'm an agnostic. I said, no, that means without knowledge. So you're proud that you're ignorant. <laughs> I don't do that to many people, just those who are a little smart out there. But now look back at verse 15. For this people's heart is wax grows, their ears of dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. See, it's they're the one that determine it. And get this, should, see that word should, should understand with their heart, and should be converted. That means turn again to the truth, and I would heal them. <coughs> In other words, the Lord's there, and he's ready, and he will. He'll save anybody. All you've got to do is believe the truth. But if you choose not to believe the truth, don't blame God for that. You see, Calvinists say you can't choose. Jesus said you can. Now, who are you going to believe? Jesus or the Calvinist? When he says you can know and you can believe and you should, three times in this one verse he uses that word should. It should be different. He says that their eyes they have closed in verse 51. And should understand. And should be converted. And should heal them. All these are right there in this verse of what could be done. Now I want you to take your notes. Look on page two. Page two. I want to show you why I believe that this is so important. So I put certain things in bold a little bit. And a little uh, repeating. Because I believe it's important. See, at the top of the page there, that verse, Matthew 13, 13. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see and see not. It's just like you've got eyes you can see, but you don't see. You have ears, you can hear words, but you don't really hear. You don't understand. The Bible says this, I have not seen Ear hath not heard, neither has entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us that do love him. But he revealed them unto us by his spirit. Yea, the spirit searcheth all things. Yea, the spirit of God that dwells within us can teach us the things about God that no man can know. But he says, the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. Because they're spiritually certain and he doesn't have the Holy Spirit indwelling him. But if a man, the natural man, which all of us were at one time, we were all lost at one time, but somebody brought to us the light of the gospel. Help us to see how to go to heaven. Most of us in here, maybe all of us, at one time thought we had to be good to go to heaven. And that was a lie. That we had to go to church and we had to give money to go to heaven. And that's a lie. We were all probably thought at one time you have to wait till you die to find out whether you were good enough to make it. And if you was good, you go to heaven and bad, you go to hell. And we thought we have to wait till we die to find out if we can go to heaven. And that's a lie. We find out the truth that God says you can know right now. Why? Because it's free. And it's the gift of God. He doesn't give it to us as a reward for us behaving ourselves. This is to show us how much God loves us. And so he gave us the free gift of everlasting life to whosoever would believe it. That it was a gift. That it's free. You try to earn it, you can't have it. You can't have it. Do you believe your good works has anything to do with it? You can't have it. You can't go. Now, I didn't make the rules. I'm just telling you, this is what he said. And it's the same for everybody. So go on all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It didn't matter what kind of soil it was. Just preach the gospel to everybody. Because even those, regardless of not, at any time, 
at any time, they can change their mind and believe it. But whether they do or not, that's their choice, not God's. Now, in your notes there, look at Matthew 13, 14, top of the page. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart, there's the cause, is waxed gross. It means they've hardened themselves, calloused, and their ears are dull of hearing. And their eyes, see those three words? They have closed. They closed. They closed their understanding. They didn't want to hear it. They don't want to believe. And you can't make people see. You can't make a blind man see. So the next statement. He says, their eyes they have closed. Get this. Less at any time. They should see with their eyes. At any time. You can believe the gospel today, and if you don't believe it today, you can believe it tomorrow. You don't believe it tomorrow, you can believe it next day. Of course, you don't ever know how much time you've got to live. So if you want to wait till tomorrow, you can. You can wait all year if you want. But you're running a risk. You could die. And the longer you wait, the more calloused or hardened or gross your understanding is going to become. You're not going to see as much. Out of sight, out of mind. You may hear it today and say, you know, I'm going to think about that for the next 10 years. Yeah, good luck. Do me a favor. Don't die. Look at the next part. Lest at any time they should see with their ears or their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted. It means turn again to truth. And I should heal them. It was the will of God to save them. The good seed was sown to them. They chose not to believe it. This refutes the teaching of Calvinism. Look at the next statement. Four types of soil. The birds get the seed before the person understands and accepts that it's truth because of their own previous rejection of light. Don't know, don't care, not concerned, and it just lays by the wayside. And they don't think about it, don't want to think about it. Because you see, if you think about something... It might make sense. You may see that, you know, there's no trick to this. But some people don't even want to hear it. That's their choice. You can't make it, but God says, sow the seed. You sow the seed. You sow the seed to all kinds of ground. And it went everywhere. You see, Jesus Christ didn't say, just sow it on good ground. No, he said, sow it everywhere. Every person. Every individual. And now notice, number one, these are lost. These are lost. The second statement I have here, three soils that receive the seeds as truth. They received it, all three of these. The stony ground received it, and the thorny ground did also. And he goes to here, and he explains all of this. Now, I want you to look there back in your notes in Matthew chapter 13. Chapter 13 and look at verse 18. He says, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. He's going to explain it to them. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receiveth seed by the wayside. This person did not receive it, did not understand. You see, you can't trust Christ as your Savior without understanding what you're doing. Well, I was saved when I was a baby. Really? People have been confirmed, baptized, pasteurized, salmonized. But if you never trusted Christ as your Savior, all oh, that's a waste. Of, that's just fluff. It has no value. So he says in verse 19, in verse 20, But he that receiveth the seed in the stony place... The same as he which heard the word and immediately with joy receiveth it, yet he hath not. So this is the saved person. Yet hath he not root in himself, but doeth for a while, because when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. They say if you get saved, you are going to be found 
faithful all the days of your life. Evidently, that's not true. Here's a person who does receive the word, does believe it immediately, and lo and behold, because he doesn't get deep into the word of God because of uh, short roots, and he doesn't produce any fruit. Was it everybody going to produce it? No, this one did not produce fruit. Well, if you're really saved, you're going to produce... No, this one was saved and did not produce the fruit. And they get caught up in the things of this world. As he says here, tribulation come. The persecutions of life. And so you don't have time. You trust Christ as your Savior. Like sometimes these kids will go out on Friday night soul winning. Or you may lead somebody to the Lord. And they will get into the pearly gates. They'll have eternal life. And God will let them go to heaven. Because you're saved by grace. But if they never get into a church, never get into the Bible, they'll never grow strong. And the things of life, they won't understand. They won't understand spiritual maturity. They won't be faithful because they, they don't know. And this is why we want people to come to church so you can get a Bible and read and study it and people can encourage you and help you and, so that you can grow and become a strong, mature Christian. But you see, Calvinists teach that if you get saved, you will. It's automatic. No, it's not. They did not. And they were offended. Now look at verse 22. He also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. Choke the word and he becomes what? Unfruitful. Maybe he was for a while and then he stopped. So he wasn't faithful all the time. In other words, he did not persevere to the end. They say, well, you've got to persevere. He didn't. It's just not true what Calvinists teach. But there's churches that are full of pastors who are Calvinists. And they believe they're teaching the Bible. They're not teaching what the Bible teaches. In this one parable alone, Jesus refutes every point of Calvinism. And because of this deceitfulness. Now, Notice verse 23. But he that receiveth seed into good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. So here you have somebody that bears fruit. That's good ground. The soil can have good deep roots. A person comes to church and they get involved, they hear, they listen, they learn, they grow and become fruitful for the Lord. Now, one of these represent you. You may have trusted Christ as your Savior, but you've never grown in the Lord. Or you're caught up because of all the cares of this world and it's just draining all the strength right out of you. Well, he uses the illustration, the come, sun comes out and you got hot and therefore you wither. You see, you can't wither unless there's life. And so there was life. They came from the seed. But things come, and next thing you know, a thorn choke. Can't choke something that never had life. So you see, these had life, but they didn't grow, didn't mature. And you can waste your life and not become fruitful the way God wanted to. So Jesus is talking to them, yeah, the sower went forth to sow, and he sowed the seed. And the seed falls upon people's minds. And as I teach truth out of the word of God, the seed is the good word of God. And so you sow the seed. I'm sowing some seeds this morning. Whose mind will it fall upon? Some of you may be thinking about the turkey you're about to eat. <laughs> you may be thinking about your girlfriend or your boyfriend. I can be up here talking about all these great spiritual things, and you're out there in, in, <clears throat> in a worldly, carnal mind. Wouldn't that be a shame? You wouldn't do that, would you? Would you? And so you, you might be receiving what I'm saying, saying, no, I understand that, and I, I, I realize I need to correct this problem or correct this problem. And some of you probably will, but some of you won't. But it'll be your choice. You see, the reason God uses some people is because they're teachable, and they grow and they mature. Have you ever seen somebody, you can be you know, a, a saint for 50 years, 
And somebody comes along and they come to church, they trust Christ as their Savior, and then they get involved and they start doing all kinds of things. Next thing you know, they grow and grow and grow and grow, and they have left you 10 years behind. Well, God won't. No, 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 no. God won't at all. But some people won't. And you will respond according to the life you have and what you want to accomplish. And you can waste your life. That'd be your choice. Now, the other part I want you to see is this. We're right in the middle of the page. The parable as applied to sound doctrine. The seed was to be cast to everyone. The results reveal the condition of their mind. How you respond to the word of God depends upon where your mind is. Is it good soil? Thorns? Briars? And you you receive it, but it can't grow and no results from it because it gets choked out by everything else. You ever heard people say, you know, I'd love to serve the Lord, but I'm just, you know, I'm just so busy. I'm just so busy. You know, I've got this and I've got that. Be entangled with the affairs of this life so that you cannot please the one who calls you to be a soldier. Everybody's got a reason. Everybody's got an excuse. And it's not my fault. they got something they can blame. And you can decide whether or not you want to be as godly as you can be or you can be carnal if you want to. You can be as dedicated as you want or you can be as lax as you want. But it's the Lord that knows, and that's why he says one of these days we're going to have to give an account of himself to the Lord. Every man shall give account of himself to God, the book of Romans in chapter 14. So that day, yes, that day is coming. And every one of us has got to respond and give account of ourselves. Now, notice under number one there, the seed was to be cast to everyone. The first did not understand. Seed by the wayside. No desire, don't care, don't want it, don't need it, leave me alone. I've had people go say, go preach to somebody else. When I want it, I'll come to church. One of the guys that told me that, after I trust the Lord, and I wanted them to trust the Lord. And so I would, every time I got around them, I'd say something about it. And it, I guess I was harassing them with the gospel. There's a lot of people being harassed right now, and they're having a lot of con- I guess I harassed them with the gospel. I just wouldn't let them go. And finally, he looked at me and he says, if I want to hear preaching, I'll go to church. Now, leave me alone and stop preaching to me. That was my stepdad. My stepdad. My mother would get up and walk out of the room. Because I was trying to explain to God. I just didn't want my mom to go to hell. I didn't want my stepdad to go to hell. And I told him the best I knew how. And I was probably, I was rude. I was probably crude. Finally, when my stepdad had a heart attack, wound up in the hospital in Atlanta, Georgia. And I went up there to see him. And I hadn't even gone into a room. They wouldn't let nobody in the room. My mom was in there, and I could see through the window. And I saw my stepdad laying there in the bed. And my mom was standing beside the bed. And she looked, and she saw me. And I hadn't seen my stepdad for a couple of years. And I... I was staring through the window, and he he went like this. So Mama said, so they opened the door and let me come in and have prayer with him. He wanted me to come in and pray for him. He got a heart attack. Anyway, I did, but he softened his heart. You know that I don't know, and I don't care, and I don't want to hear it, and I'll... Things can happen in your life, and you'd be surprised how God can work in people's lives and break you in half to get you to listen. Put a two before over your head. Take somebody real close to you that you love and you can't do without, and all of a sudden you find out there's a lot of things you don't know in life and you can't solve and you can't make happen, and you see that people don't fall on their knees or wind up going to the Lord. Now, God may work in your life in a strange way, but I've watched it happen. But anyway, number two, the second understood and received it immediately with joy, but was easily offended because he had no roots. He did not grow to maturity, remains as a babe in Christ. So there are people who trust Christ as Savior, and they grow. See, but see, that's contrary to what Calvinists will teach. A lot of them teach there's no such thing as a babe in Christ. Now, I want you to take your Bible and turn with me all the way over there to the book of 1 Corinthians and chapter 3. 1 Corinthians in chapter 3, as he writes this to the believers at Corinth, he makes a statement in chapter 3 and verse 1. Make sure you look at this in your Bible. 
There's a church Bible in the pew, and it's on page 1214 if you want to look at it. He says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual or maturing saints, those that are spiritually minded. You see, spiritually minded means you mind the spirit, and fleshly minded means you mind the flesh. If you mind the flesh, then God says you're carnally minded. So he says, And brethren, I could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto they say that this doesn't mean babes in Christ. Well, what does it say, babes in Christ? But they don't believe there's babes in Christ. But there are babes in Christ. But they said there is no babes in Christ. But the Bible says babes in Christ. I believe the Bible. And I believe there's children of God who have never matured in the Lord. And just because they're not faithful doesn't mean they're not a babe. And just because they don't serve God and grow to maturity doesn't mean they're not a child of God. I believe there will be a lot of God's children who go to heaven in diapers. But I'd rather have them there in diapers than not at all. Not all of God's children will yield to the Lord as they should. Though it's the will of God that they do so, but people are free to choose. You are free to choose whether to trust Christ as your Savior or not. You are free to choose. You can, after you trust Christ, you can choose to serve him or not serve him. But God does not and cannot go back upon his word. Once you trust Christ as Savior, that means that you're trusting him to save you and take you to heaven. Where you're going to heaven depends upon him, not you. So I'm going to heaven because, see, he, he got to keep his promise. He said, if I would believe it, he would save me. Now, saving me is his job, not mine. And he said he'd never cast me out and never lose me. One of the ways that I like to show that this salvation is forever is this way. You see, this represents the Lord. And this is religious people. See, they think that they're going to go to heaven if they get a good grip on God. You know, they go to church, they give money, and they pray, do all these good deeds. So now they think they're going to heaven because they're hanging on to God and doing what's right. But then if they start slipping away, they start slipping away. Now they're lost. Got to get saved again. And where are you going when you die? Well, I'm trying. I'm doing the best I can. Hanging in there. And then all of a sudden, there's that good looking blonde bombshell walk by. <laughs> and you hope you don't die in the middle of some bad thought. And so where are you going to die? Well, well, I'm trying. Well, I don't, I, I don't know. And this is why, because, see, their salvation depends upon them. But, see, the Bible is totally different. The Bible is, is if I trust him, he saves me. See the difference? I'm not trying to save me. I don't even have a hold of me. He has a hold of me. He is taking me to heaven. And he said he'll never cast me out. He said he will never lose me. He says that I am in his hand, and no man can pluck you out of his hand. So he's taking me to heaven. That's how I know I'm going to get there. God cannot lie. And any man who trusts him, God gives you the free gift of eternal life. You're being saved by grace. This is not salvation by grace. Anyone who tells you you can lose your salvation doesn't understand salvation. They don't understand grace. And that's why they say, well, you have to endure to the end. And if you are not enduring to the end, then now you're gone, my friend. That's not salvation. I trusted him. He saves me. And I never have to worry about it again. I'm going to heaven whenever I die. That is the best news in all the world. Now, back here to 1 Corinthians in chapter 3. He says, I have fed you with milk not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. You can't handle me. I had a person come to me and say, I'm tired of all this milk I'm getting around this church. I said, you can't handle meat. I said, because you backbite, you criticize, you are envious, full of jealousy, those are signs of the flesh. And when you get yourself right with the Lord, you might get a little meat that you can eat. But that comes because you're maturing. I says, you're a child. 
You're a babe in Christ. And I don't like spiritual snobs and the false spirituality of people trying to say there's something when they're not. I like to tell people simply, grow up. Grow up. Be in a spiritual adult person that can handle spiritual responsibilities. But it's a choice that people make. And they always have a, a reason why they can't be faithful or, you know, maturing in the Lord. And be found fruitful because you can be. Go back to your notes. I've got to finish this today. Or we'll stay here until I do. But look at number three. The third understood and received it, but no fruit because he was entangled with the cares of this world. The weeds, deceitfulness of riches, choke the word. A person who believes, but in your Christian life, you're choked out because of all the weeds that you're messing with. Instead of realizing there's, see, if you love flowers, you got to hate weeds. And some people are falling in love with weeds. And they don't even know what they're falling in. They don't know it's weeds. It's just like, you know, the little girl that doesn't understand the big, da you know, uh, dandelions. And they, they're also pretty flower and things. Or the guy with... If your husband came home with some dandelions and gave them to you, would you be impressed? Now, it, that might be what he thinks is the most beautiful flower in all the world. But now you may not. And there's things like that in life that people are making decisions on. Look at number four. The fourth, hear it the word, understand it, and there's fruit. Now get these. Number two, each of the last three, C, D, uh, B, and, and D, receive the word, believe the word, and are saved. Each person determines his own type of soil. The sower did not predetermine the soil. The sower did not predetermine the soil. The person to believe. The sower doesn't determine that. He just sows the seed. Not all believers will mature in the Lord. Some will remain babes in Christ. Not all believers will be faithful. Many will be offended to serve the Lord. Not all believers will persevere in the faith. Many will be caught up in the things of this world. Not all believers will be fruitful. But they're their choices people make. So down at the bottom, I kind of corrected each one of these. Total depravity of man. See, man can choose to hear, to see, and to believe. Man can. And that parable proves it. Unconditional election, anyone may choose to believe. That's why I said, sow the seed. Sow the seed. And anybody can believe. Limited atonement, the seed was sown to all soils. Irresistible grace, all could have, but many chose not to. They do resist. Perseverance of the saints, many did not reach maturity or persevere in the faith. One parable destroys the teaching of Calvinism. Calvinism is not true. I have eternal life. I'm going to heaven whenever I die. And I believe that Jesus Christ died for everybody and that he can give eternal life to anybody. He hasn't already predetermined who's going to believe it or not. God looks down through that long telescope of time and he says he will save all who believe but it's your choice whether you'll believe it or not. Would you choose today to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior? You can reject it or you can accept it. And nobody can force you. Nobody can make you do this because it's a thing between you and God. The preacher can't save you. Your husband and wife can't save you. The kids can't save you. Nobody can save you. There's only one Savior, and that's Jesus Christ. You have to trust him. Look up there. This didn't represent you and me. The wallet represents sin. We all have sin on us. The Bible says that God loves the whole world. But the whole world is guilty of sin. Because we have all sinned. We're all condemned because the wages of sin is death. We all have to die. And be eternally separated from God in a literal fire burning hell. But God loves us. Hates our sin. But to go to heaven, you have to be without sin. And there's none without sin except one. That was Jesus Christ. So we can't go to heaven because we've got to get rid of this. And when we get rid of it, you've got to die. And then the payment's never paid for because it's eternal payment. Man has no hope. Man cannot save himself. So the Bible says that Jesus Christ 
was sent into this world by God the Father. Because God is not a respecter of person. God can't pick and choose who he wants to save because he can't save any of them. He can't save any of them unless their sins are paid. So if he can't pay for his sins, then God can't save anybody. So what happens? Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, came into the world. He has no sin, doesn't have to die. So when he pays for the sins of the world, then, he, see, he can't pay for some of them. He has to pay for all of them because he's not a respecter of person. <coughs> he can't pick and choose. If he wants any, he has to pay for all of them. So Christ took the sin, paid for it on the cross, paid for it, came back from the dead. So the sins of the whole world has already been paid. Came back from the dead and says, whosoever would believe I did that for them, he would put that payment to their account. They go to heaven on what he did. It's the gift. It's free. Think about it, the whole world. But see, people's minds go to all world, preach this gospel to everybody, regardless of whether it's by the wayside or whether it's stony or whether it's stony, or whether it's good, just sow the seed. Because even some of those people that are hard-headed trust in the Lord with stony ground. And all those people that are just buried in life with all the problems of life and the thorns and the things that are brought, he says, they can still trust the Lord. Everybody can trust the Lord. And those by the wayside can care. Sometimes God will allow things to happen in people's lives to get their attention. I don't know if he's done anything in your life to get your attention. But he's gotten my attention a couple of times. Let's pray, shall we? Every head bowed and every eye closed and no one looking around. If you're here this morning and you have never trusted Christ as your Savior, friend, there's no trick to this, no gimmicks. But right where you're sitting, you can make the best decision you've ever made in your whole life. If you're not positive, sure that you're going to heaven when you die. Would you right now, in the quietness of this moment, would you trust Christ as your Savior? Would you say in your own mind, Lord, I believe Christ died for me, paid for my sins, and I'm going to believe it. And friend, if you'll believe it, God said he would say to give you eternal life, you go to heaven on what he did for you. There's no tricks involved. You're not promising this church anything. You don't have to come forward. You don't have to give them a dime. I'm just saying this is between you and the Lord. Would you trust him? I'm going to ask for a raise of hand in just a moment. Raising your hand doesn't save you, and it not to trick you so I can do something else with you. I'm not going to pin you against the wall or embarrass you in any way. I do it with heads bowed because I don't want to embarrass you, but I'd like to know if what I said made sense to you. And I'd like to have prayer for you in closing. So in the quietness of this moment, is there anyone else say, yes, preacher, that made sense to me. And I want to trust Christ right now as my Savior. Friend, would you just slip your hand up very quickly and put it right back down? Same with it all. Yes, God bless you, ma'am. That's just a sign of good judgment. Smartest decision you'll ever make. Anyone else before we close? Just slip it up real quickly. Put it right back down. Anyone else? Anyone else? Our Father, we thank you so much for the one that indicated by an uplifted hand that they would trust your Savior. And we thank you, Father, for the gospel that you do love us all. You did pay for everybody's sins. And that whosoever can believe that they can have eternal life. We thank you for this time, the study of your word. Ask now your blessings upon the food. We thank you so much for all the people that worked so hard to make it possible so that we can go and fellowship and enjoy it. Thank you for each person. And thank you for these that are here today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.